Hey, what's good, everyone? Welcome back to Ice Rink Diaries. The local ice man here. And today, in part three, we're going to be sharpening some hockey skates. So stay tuned. It's going to be exciting. Where's my smoothie? All right, I got a pair of Bauer Supremes here. We'll go ahead and sharpen the customer skates. Yes, for 7 16 um, Maybe I'll get the set of views set up for you here, guys, a little bit. But uh, let's go ahead and dress the wheel here. Got a half inch before, so we're doing 7 16 There is a little knob I'm pulling back. I didn't show a good job in the first video. I'm not that sure that pulls this diamond pull towards the wheel. There we go. Got a tabletop there. Get it superstitious. I always do the left skate first. The one thing I do that I did address, that I always, well, I did a little bit, I always like to check the level of the clip blade first to make sure um, I don't have any surprises. So that's pretty good there in the bottom, top. Since we're talking about uh, hockey skates, I didn't really address with uh, figure skates because there's only really one way uh, to sharpen a figure skate, which is this way. You can't really go backwards. Yet. You see some of the Blade Master videos where the skate's mounted, the skate positioner, I'm going to turn the wheel off here, um, with the heel first, and they go heel to toe, heel to toe. Um, I was just taught to go toe to heel, toe to heel, and honestly, I don't, um, I guess I haven't been personally explained to me what the difference is, um, so I don't know if it really matters to say. But I could be corrected on that. Go ahead and comment below. Um, one thing I do mention though is that the wheel spins this way. And when you go with the spin in the wheel, it's a much smoother cut. Uh, there's times where I go against the spin of the wheel, go backwards. And that's when I have real uh, a lot of nicks and, uh, and a really um, or an old blade or a, or a skate that's brand new that needs, um, after cross grinding, it needs more uh, aggressive sharpening. I go always go with the spin of the wheel, um, but times I'll go against it, and that's more of an aggressive cut. Um, but I always finish going this way. So, um, so again, whether you're uh, you're going heel first or toe first, um, I'm not too sure if it makes a, a big difference. Um, as long as you're going with the spin of the wheel, I guess. Um, and if you have a tendency to do this kind of stuff, going back and forth a lot, you can uh, rock your blades, change your profile in a um, So, and uh, when I'm speaking about that, um, that was kind of, my skate sharp knowledge is a combination of uh, a bunch of people's, uh, you know, watching a bunch of people and talking to a bunch of people. So, uh, I heard too that, you know, like some guys, what they do is they'll do like, Three passes in the middle to one pass around the whole the whole blade, so you don't um, skate too much, uh, take too much off the ends and round your blade off. So I, I um, kind of prescribe to that. That seems to make sense to me. Uh, one thing I'll do too is um, that if I do, I'll do a little bit quicker there, and then a little bit uh, slower, and then quick off the end, but not not flaring it this way. Uh, but I just don't want to, um, older skates you'll see a lot that's been sharpened a lot, this really changes. You don't want the skate to become too rocky, especially in the back, so you got to be careful not to take too much off the back um, or the front. Uh, but you tend to skate more up on your toes, I guess, um, so you definitely want to get the front. I mean, you're not going to be on your tippy toes, but you definitely want to get the entire skate on the wheel. So, um, there's just a couple of things I want to address specifically for hockey skates. Um, the toe heel first or the, the spin of the wheel, that's also important. Um, let's see here, okay, we got that. Got dressed up, we start her up. Wheel's going, the bite's off. I have a pretty good sense of where this positioner is at because I've already done the hockey skates on it before I started this, just to make sure everything's good. So um, I know if I do a 
pass on it. Let's do three passes. And check the level. And I know I didn't do three to one or one to three like I talked about. So I can only I can always show you guys the bottom one, but the top one is gonna be hard. So that one looks a little bit a little high on that side. We're gonna adjust the cam handle down. And yes, I finally figured out what that was called. So it looks like the top is a little bit high too, which is you know we're doing another pair of different pair of skates from. Uh, Going from a CCM to a Bauer. And there's not a huge difference. But it's more like old skates versus new skates. It seems like the Bauer Vapors, the Bauer Supremes are the most popular skates. You see a few CCMs now and then. But the Bauer Vapors seem like have really nice steel on them. So that's, that's more like it. So it's my, I know it's going to be one of the finishing passes, I'm going to go a little bit slower. So the next skate I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with that. One to three ratio pass. Uh, that's on the level, everything's on the level. And the toe looks good. Grab the honey stone right here. Run right across the honey stone. Here's you go back and forth. Sorry, I'm a little limited on space here. And I got my towel, I wipe the blade off. Color good. Right, I, I don't really uh, dress the wheel between skates unless I'm doing new skates or skates that are rusty. So I was referring to the one to three is going like start right there, stopping right there. Sorry, three to one. I had it right the first time. Three passes, then you do one pass. I can see what they're saying, and that certainly makes sense. Check the level here. Yep, not bad, not bad. So there's sometimes I do think I know what I'm talking about, even though most time I don't. So the toe just needs a slight adjustment. Slight. One pass. The slower passes I do, um, I know I said I'll do a, try to do two, th two three passes if, uh, if I make a correction on the adjustment cam there. And um, I usually do a two, three passes before I check the level again. But if I do a slow pass, then I'll, I'll recheck the level. And I think, uh, see, everything was good on that one, so I'm just gonna. One slow pass. Looking good. One thing to note too, when I move this thing from the bottom to the top, I don't drag it on the blade. I pick it up. Sorry for the, the bad view there, but this thing right here, it, it's okay to slide. I see it's okay to slide it on the blade as long as you're not got it down on the blade. But don't slide this thing on the blade. That's level. Get to run across the honing stone on it. Usually up and down, maybe back again. 
Wipe the dust off it. Woo. Some of me cut the steak tonight with this thing. And one thing I did too, to touch on too, which I'll probably touch again at the end, is like when I sharpen a bunch of skates, I sharpen them. Uh, I kind of line them up if I have like six or seven skates and they're different sizes. Because uh, that really affects how you change your position here. Uh, then I line my skates up, I line them up, CCM and Bauer together. Um, and then if I have a, uh, a graph, I'll stick those onto the side. And I have a pair of, sometimes I have to do like four hockey skates and a pair of bigger skates and then goalie skates. So, um, which a whole, whole different video, I guess, I'll be on for goalie skates. Um, nothing too special. But, um, so I just, if I do a bunch of skates, I kind of, um, I group them up to brands. And I also go from uh, big, small to big. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll sharpen all the big ones together and the small ones uh, uh, together. So I always start from one size and work my way up or start the high end and work my way down. But I always try to keep them with the same blade map, actually. Even off brands and stuff, you have to sharpen these recreational skates that come in here. I mean, the blade, the blade widths vary a lot, so it kind of, uh, kind of like almost a guessing game, uh, adjusting your cam, your cam handles there, try to get the blade level. Um, we got a bunch of different types of skates, but that's where I try to group, group them together to make it as much simpler as possible. As far as skate quality, you can tell, uh, the nicer skates will have different type of rivets. These rivets here, um, usually have a copper ones and the heels, and these rivets just look on uh, uh, the cheap red. Here's some graphs here. Graph actually has these screws on it here with this star bit, so it's a little bit easier to change your um, your runners. Um, these screws here, and they fall out or break. A little bit of crafts are a little bit on the higher end, typically. Your skate. And I, I did mis misspoke. Let me turn this off here to clarify a few things. I said, uh, you, you know, you won't really spend 600 bucks on a hockey skate. No, I stand corrected on that. You could spend, you know, over $1,000 on a hockey skate. But uh, I guess in some sense, I was kind of correct in the sense that um, I was referring to, like, to a blade on a figure skate could cost, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars But then you actually have your boot cost a few hundred dollars or more so I'm not getting out of figure skater and from what I understand talking to coaches and stuff the figure skate coaches that you, know, you, you can spend a lot of money on the boots and the blades whereas a hockey skate I mean again up to a thousand dollars is what you see on the high end this is not a thousand dollar skate though but um but you can't you can't spend a lot of money on hockey skates um but majority of your skates though are I guess between three and five hundred dollars um uh, graphs are a little bit on the higher end. Um, they have Bauer and CCM. Uh, Bauer Vapors seem to be a very popular skate. Uh, they have most of the market share as well. CCMs are good skates, but the, the Bauer Vapors, the Bauer Supreme, especially the Bauer Vapors, I, I really like the steel on those skates. That it's nice and soft, it's easy to sharpen, you get a nice uh, edge on it. Um, and you get a bunch of other random companies and stuff that recreational skates and um, oddball skates. Usually when you get the smaller skates, you get oddball companies and stuff, but as you get older, they're mostly Bauer Supremes or Graphs or... I'm not sure what else to add. I know I probably missed a lot of things. Um, this is just some kind of a basic overview. Um, skate sharpening lock, lock... There's basically like, there's a 10,000 hour rule to be a master, and that's what I've heard, and you know, I'm sure probably heard that too. It takes 10,000 hours, which is basically 40 hours a week for 10 years, to become a master at something. Um, uh, I'm not saying it's going to take that long, but you know, uh, as far as Sharpman skates, I mean, 10, 20, I mean, I say at the Zamboni, um, 50 cuts is the, the threshold of where it takes to, uh, before you start feeling comfortable. And most guys say, oh, it's probably like 20 or 30, but um, 50 is the number I get from some training I've done through uh, STAR um, training program. Um, I'd say 50 is about right. Um, same thing with uh, figure sk uh, sharpening skates. The more skates you do, the more comfortable you are. Um, with uh, new people, we let them uh, sharpen a bunch of rental skates first to get practice. Um, because you don't want to ruin a customer skates. Um, and then um, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And you got confidence to be able to, to do it too. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to Ice Rink Diaries. We're in part three here. We sharpen some hockey skates. 
Go ahead and tune to part four, where I talk about flat bomb design as well as custom radius. And I do have a bonus fifth video for you guys. Yes, a fifth video about skate sharpening. And that one I'm gonna sharpen a pair of goalie skates. So uh, go ahead and wait for that one to come out. And uh, like the old class man says, stay cool. Smoothie time. Uh, wait for this. That's Richard, man. Coolest cat in the cave. He's been here longer than anyone. Best Zamboni driver we have right there. And look at that. He's got the beanie right there, the thumbs up. He's got the boots on, he's got the jeans and the jacket. Like That just screams Zamboni driver to me. Screams Zamboni driver. He's a natural, look at that, he's a natural. I got a absolute natural right there. Rocking the American flag.